Okay, I'm not going to introduce the next speaker because it's me. Um, Amari Hotels in Thailand wanted to share their experiences with Google Analytics. They've been getting some really good results from it. Unfortunately, they couldn't physically be here, so I'm being their spokesperson. So before I move on, I want to ask, uh, how many of you here own a website or work with a website where you're selling something online? Surely there are more. Feel free to stretch. It's been a long afternoon. <laughs> All right, quite a few. Okay. So ask yourselves this question. Uh, how much hard work are you putting in to, to deliver people to the front or the start of your checkout funnel, the, the whole checkout process? And then how, so think of all that hard work. You've got some online marketing going. You're doing some SEO work. You're doing some viral work. You're going speaking at events like this. And then uh, how many of them actually leaving? So you've done the hard work. You brought them there. They're about to hand over their money. And then they just tease you. They, they leave before they can, uh, you can even get their payment. And so ask yourselves that question. And I guess the, the, why I'm asking you to ask that, yourselves that question is then to also ask yourselves, how can we improve the situation? Right? How do I make sure I never go through the stress? And so this is the same question that Amari has been asking itself as well. And one of the reports that they actually find very useful is the Google Analytics Funnel Report. So if you have any type of clear, defined path on your website to selling or to getting a newsletter sign up or getting somebody to fill in a contact form, you can have a, a funnel report like this. And it's actually very useful. It's a very great visual tool that allows you to see how people are flowing through your funnel, where they're entering at different points in your funnel, and more importantly, where are they actually exiting your funnel? So these are the points of leakage. These are the points where you're losing visitors who are, who are willing to actually purchase your product. So in an ideal world, you would actually want to shift away from a situation of a funnel that's leaking a lot of visitors to one where, in a perfect world, you'd never lose anybody through the funnel. Everybody who comes to the top ends up at the bottom making a purchase on your website. So this is what Amari is striving for. So Amari hotels have 18 properties uh, based in Thailand. And they're highly reliant on their website to drive a lot of e-commerce revenue for them. They've been an early adopter of Google Analytics, and they rely heavily on their funnel reports to actually improve the user experience on their website so that they get more people flowing through the funnel and making a purchase. So they ask themselves a lot of questions around, you know, where, where is our funnel working? Uh, where isn't it working? And so relying on analytics, bringing in a web analyst as well that they have in-house, somebody who's sort of part detective, so they could actually read and understand that information, identify where the funnels are dropping out, and then part creative thinker to look at where, where are we having those dropouts, what can we do to improve them, and then go back with some firm actions back to their web and their content team and say, let's fix this step so we get more people flowing through our funnel. So this is what Amari's funnel looks like. We, when somebody's ready to make a purchase, they have to select a room type on the website. That's the first step there. Then they've got to go review their details and log in, uh, or, or possibly log in. Then uh, provide some personal information there. Uh, second last step is to provide their payment information. And then finally, they hit confirm. So this is what Amari's funnel looks like uh, from time to time. So on a, in a certain time period here, at one point they had 42,000 people, or 42,000 visitors enter the top of the funnel. So this means they had 42,000 visitors who were ready to make a purchase. But at the end of the day, only two, uh, close to 2,000 of those visits uh, ended up converting. So the funnel conversion rate was only 3.76%. So what it meant was the abandonment rate of the funnel, so how many people were abandoning the flow, was 96%. So depending on which industry you're in, sometimes these numbers aren't too bad. But no matter what your abandonment rate is, even if it's at like 2%, there's still potential to do better. And so Amari took this information and on a, on a frequent basis would assess each step of the funnel and see what could we do to actually improve the funnel. So the first step is selecting the room. 
Uh, so you're taken to a page where you select the room type that you want. And uh, it's a, a little concerning when you see close to 76% uh, of your visitors on this stage actually exiting this particular uh, point. So they looked at, all right, let's look at the first step and see what we can do. So one of the first things with a bit of extensive testing, certain scenarios, certain browsers, you get an error message. Not great for user experience. The so first thing to do is to go and actually uh, fix this problem because you think of it if it was you, you're about to hand over your credit card information, you don't want to see this error message. It's not critical, but it looks, it looks scary. You don't want to give your money away. Uh, then the next thing, once you select a room, the, the website actually fetches the pricing information from the server. So this actually takes a bit of time as well. So it uh, introduced a bit of latency to the website. And so in terms of improving user experience, they wanted to create a faster experience for the user. So they started loading up the uh, prices, or well, preloading the prices. Then once your prices were loaded, there was an element of like paralysis by analysis. You had then four uh, pricing options to choose from. And so as a user, when you have four pricing options, it's just four times the headache to decide what you want to do. And Amari realized this as well, and they thought what we should do is actually reduce the number of options that we give to the visitor. Only allow them to choose two or three. Uh, that reduces the number of choices they have to select. So what they did here was they implemented Google Analytics event tracking. And so event tracking is a feature that allows you to track how people are interacting with components of your web page. And so using this information, they were actually able to identify uh, choices that weren't actually being picked. So that there was no point even placing them on the page because they were not very popular at all. And so then the redesigned page had only two options, which meant as a consumer, instead of having to evaluate four choices, you only had to evaluate two, and you came to a decision much quicker. So all right, so we've, uh, they've done some changes. They're getting more people flowing to the next uh, section, which is reviewing your booking. So looking at this page, it's, uh, it's actually pretty well designed. No big, you know, no big exclamation points here, no, no big warning bells. But one thing they then looked at doing was to actually remove the requirement to register. So it's actually it's an optional requirement. You can continue with your purchase without registering an account. Or if you wanted, you could create one or log in with an existing one. And so lots of e-commerce websites out there now are actually doing away with this. Uh, because people are coming to these sites, sometimes for the first time, and saying, well, do I really want to register again? Do I really want to remember another password? And who's looking at my information? So by taking this away, it, it uh, motivates the visitor then to shift on to the next step without being, you know, uh, having the registration phase as, as a hurdle. So next we have to come into uh, placing our details. And again, a fairly well-designed page, but there are probably a few things they could do better on this page. Again, evaluating it, assessing the different options. Uh, one, one thing they had was a, a slight rendering issue in Firefox 3, a, a message would pop up, so get rid of that. Uh, if you're uh, asking for unneeded information or information that's not essential for the booking, so at one point they were asking for flight arrival information. If you're anything like me, sometimes you book your hotel before you book the flight. Or if you're anything like me, you always forget your flight number until you get to the airport and you've got to figure out where you've got to check in. And so this, even though it's not mandatory information, it, it's sometimes enough to detract visitors from, from continuing on because they go, oh, I don't know this and uh, I, I'll give up now. Uh, the other thing they're also doing, they have a lot of trust symbols there, you know, verified by Visa, MasterCard, secure code and so on. And so they also experimented with putting that in different uh, areas of the page to make that more prominent and also repeating it across multiple steps as well. Then we get to you know, the business end, which is getting to the uh, credit card details page. So this is where the user puts in their credit card details. And you see here close to 40% of them leave. And this is where you get to the situation. You could almost smell that, that plastic and uh, it was just not meant to be. So Amari, again, evaluated their credit card payment page. And so what could we do to enhance the user experience here? So a few little things. Um, 
I know this is hard to read, so don't, don't try and focus on it too much. You'll get a copy of this, but uh, you know, just little user experience uh, things. So for example, when you're placing your credit card information, you had to manually shift the focus of your mouse from one box to the other. So that was changed, that was automated. Uh, moving their, their trust symbols to a more prominent area of the page and all their trust messaging to a more prominent area of the page. And then also down the bottom, just a warning, nothing, nothing major, nothing critical, saying that depending on your financial institution, depending on your credit card provider, you might have to go through extra authentication processes. So they also experimented with just removing this message and only showing it when it was needed. So not to, not to alarm anyone before they submit their details. So Amari took all these, uh, you know, investigated the funnel, came up with a lot of ideas on, as to how to improve the funnel, how to improve each step, improve the user experience, and they tested it out. And they used a tool called Google Website Optimizer to test out these ideas to see what works. And fast forward a few weeks, now their funnel conversion rate is a lot healthier. It's now at about 4.35%. Not, not a massive improvement, but improvement enough. It was a good first step. So in the space of a few weeks, what this meant was that for every thousand visitors that were coming to the top of their funnel, every thousand visitors who had to select a room, they were getting six additional paying visitors. If we averaged out all those orders and said, right, that was about $500 per visitor, who, what, that's what they ended up spending, that meant it was an additional $3,000 worth of uh, new extra revenue for every thousand visitors they were getting. But that, that $3,000 bottom line is just the tip of the iceberg because for any of those who are actually new visitors to the site, Amari were actually capturing new customers that they could potentially convert into loyal customers who keep coming back and keep buying at Amari itself. So what's your takeaway from this? And if anything, I'd like you to encourage to go away back to your websites, back to your businesses, and to adopt an approach like Amari have, to put into a, a, a process or a four-step cycle like this, where first off, you're measuring your funnel using Google Analytics goals and funnels, investigating your funnel periodically, whether it's weekly, monthly, quarterly, to see how could we improve each step of that funnel. Then plan out some ways to improve that funnel, actually, and then end up testing it. Execute your tests, use Google Website Optimizer, and of course, go back, keep measuring, keep improving. It's always continuous improvement. And that's what Amari are doing, and hopefully, like them, I, one day you can get to the perfect situation where we're not leaking anyone at all and you're not mopping up any puddles. Thank you very much.